Hi, I'm Terry Brock with TerryBrock.com, and this week we're going to talk about something that's very important for you in your business, and that is how do you get attention in this age of overwhelm? You know what I'm talking about. I mean, there's so much going on. We've got yet another video to watch, and another podcast to listen to, another video on the on, online that we want to see. We've got so many things going on. We're just stretched to the max, and we feel exhausted. Well, as you're feeling that, guess what? So are your customers. They're feeling the same thing. And not just your customers, even more importantly, your prospects. They're wondering, what are we going to do? How can we keep up with it all? And now here you're coming in going, hi, I'm wonderful. We've got a new message for you. Well, they're overwhelmed. So how do you get your message across to people in a meaningful, powerful way in this age of overwhelm when they're swamped, you're swamped, and yet if you don't get their attention, they're never going to buy from you. Well, there's some things that you can do. One of them that you do not want to do is to just say, I'm going to quit and I'm going to leave the planet. Sometimes you need to do that. Stepping back for that necessary rejuvenation, that what I like to call the SEM, study, exercise, and meditation on a daily basis. It's really, really important. However, what you really want to do is to have the right balance to focus on the things that are important for you. Now, let's flip it over and what you can do in your business, the kind of things that you can do to get attention in a favorable way. There's several things that you can do. And one of the first is to realize the fragmentation that's out there in the world. Fragmented markets are reality. Not everyone is going to be interested in everything. We can't, but then that's normal. What you'll want to do is to realize, first of all, not everybody is going to really want your stuff. When you talk to marketers that are just getting started, many of them, when asked who is their target market, who are they appealing to, they'll say, everybody. Well, wrong answer. You can't appeal to everybody or you're not going to make it at all. What you've got to do is be able to be very specific. Find out who it is and realize that not everybody is going to pay attention. You know, I find the most successful salespeople are the ones who don't accept that rejection that comes inevitably when you're in sales. They realize that not everybody's going to buy what they've got. And so they let it go and they keep focusing on the things that matter most. So accept this fragmentation that's in the market today. And number two, think focus and specificity. That relates to what we were talking about before. There's so much fragmentation, but you want to be very specific and provide a specific need. As you do that and you get very specific in a good niche where there's ample people, a good supply, they're ready, willing, and able to pay for your services, then you're going to get their attention because they're going to go, hey, this person can solve our problems. We want certain things, and so you're now solving it, and that gives you the ability to get through this clutter that's out there and to get attention in the age of overwhelm. And point number three, be incredibly relevant. You want to make sure that when people hear what you've got to say, that they realize, whoa, I need to know this. You are relevant. You want to make sure that you're right on target with what they are looking for. You can't be just a generalist. Generalists do, do not do very well. Generalists generally do not do very well. <laughs> How's that? But you want to make sure that you're focusing on things that are really practical and solve a need that people have. I love the way that Bill Cosby said it when he said, I don't know what it takes to be successful, but I do know what it takes to be a failure, and that's to try to please everybody. Bill was so right on that, and I think that if we try to please everybody, we're going to fail miserably. Realize that you're going to say, these people are the ones I'm going to serve. Others are going to go, oh, we don't want that, and that's okay. It goes back to that accepting and not letting rejection get you down. Focus on those things, and then you'll be able to achieve the goals that you want. And here's another important one. You want to make sure that you're consistent. Regularly, all the time, doing the same types of things. Your brand and your image must match. If one week you're a hippie and the next week you're a conservative Wall Street banker and then the next week you're uh, something else, then people are going to go, well, what? we don't understand. And when someone is confused, the confused mind always says no. They always say, no, not going to deal with this person. And in business, you want to show that consistency, which then subconsciously says, this person is dependable. I can trust them. I know that they're going to be right there. They're going to be able to do it. So that means if you've got a newsletter going out, make sure that it's out there regularly on a basis that people can depend on. So that if you're out there every Thursday morning, yeah, make sure you're there every Thursday morning. You want to be able to be a person that people depend on. So more than ever, when you say you're going to do something, do it. When you say, hey, I'm going to make sure you get those supplies by 3 p.m. next Tuesday, that they get it by 3 p.m. next Tuesday. And I would even submit that that kind of consistency 
is a strong competitive advantage in a world that's going crazy and when people are not as reliable. And finally, number five, make sure that you use fun and funny appropriately. That is something we want. We like having fun. We like having funny humor put into the message. And so do that, but do it in a very careful way. Too many times people try to be funny, and it doesn't turn out well. As I mentioned in the po audio podcast that accompanies this, too often people will try uh, to say a joke. You know, a priest, a minister, and a rabbi walked into a bar, and we're going, ugh, please, just spare us from that. Don't force it if it's not you. Be natural and practice. You can get a lot of coaches that can help you on these things. Jeff Justice is a person that comes to mind up in Atlanta. And there are many others that give you the ability to go through some training to learn how to be funny, how to take the natural part of you and then embellish that to make sure that it's even better. And in business, that can be real helpful. If you're in sales, be one of the best courses you can take. Get a course on how you can use humor appropriately. Don't just try it on your own. Get others that are professionals to help you on this kind of thing. Well, these are things that can help you to stand out in a world that's crowded, overwhelmed, and so much going on. I encourage you to look into that. And by the way, if I can help you out, let me know. I do a lot of speaking for groups around the world, talking with them about how to increase their marketing using social media, using the technology, and also do a lot of coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And we use technology, yeah, we leverage that a lot with Skype video, with phone messages, personal meetings, etc. So if I can help you, just bounce over to www. TerryBrock.com. Hey, hope you have a great day, and I will look forward to hearing from you. Be sure and leave a comment at www.terrybrock.com, and I will look forward to hearing from you. Hope you have a great day today.